If you're wanting to get serious into video editing, CapCut is a game changer. Not only is it free, but it also has some seriously advanced features that will make your videos more engaging and will boost your subscribers, views, and watch time, which can lead to you getting monetized. But with this video, it may be faster than you think. So in this video, I'm going to be going through everything you need to know as a complete beginner to be able to start editing like a pro on CapCut PC. So without further ado, let's get started. So when you first open up CapCut, this is kind of what you're going to be seeing at first. This is the interface. And the first step in order to start your project is to import some footage. So you can either just click on this import button, or you can also drag and drop your clips into this section. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and click on import. And then as you can see, I got all of the files that I want to import right in this folder, all my videos and audios. So now I'm just going to select all of them, click on open. And as you can see, now I got all of the clips inside of CapCut. In order to actually apply them onto your timeline, all you need to do is just click on this little plus icon next to the certain clip just like that but let's say you want to go through your footage first if you would like to do that you could just click on the actual video file and you can see it playing just like that but yeah i'm just going to go ahead and click the plus icon to add it to the timeline or you can also just go ahead and drag and drop it onto your timeline just like this and another option that you can do as well if you want to only import a certain part of your clip is to go where you want to have the clip start for example just click on the video play it and pause it wherever you want it to start just like that and you can press i on your keyboard to set the endpoint, you can then have this clip start over here instead of the beginning. And if you would like to import that part instead, you can just go ahead and delete the original clip, click on the video file, and just drag and drop it onto the timeline. And as you can see, it started where you cut the clip from. Then you want to go to where you want it to end, for example right over here. And now you can either press O on your keyboard to set the out point, or what you also can do is drag the end of the timeline to your playback marker just like that. Now the next crucial thing that you want to make sure to set up in order to get the best results that you are looking for is to set up the aspect ratio of your project. The first thing you want to do to set this up is to click off of the video. Towards the right side of your screen you'll see details, you want to go ahead and click on modify. As you can see my timeline ratio is set to original, but I'm going to set it to 16 to 9 which would be the ideal aspect ratio for youtube uploads but if you would like to change this you could go to 9 by 16 which is basically meant for tiktok tiktok ads and also instagram reels or even if you click on original it will just use the original aspect ratio of your clip and if you would like to change the frame rate of your project you can go right below resolution over here and click on frame rate and here you're able to manually set the frame rate of whatever type of video or content you're going for so for example if you're looking for a 24 fps project you can just go ahead and click 24. In this case, I'm going to switch to 60 FPS. You can also name your project right up here. I'm probably just going to name this test project or something like that. And you can just go ahead and click save at the bottom of the pop-up tab. One more thing I forgot to mention is go back to the modify tab right over here to the color space. For most beginners, I just recommend leaving them as they are, aside from the resolution and the frame rate, because other stuff you don't really need to touch as of now, but as you get more advanced, you may need to change it accordingly, but you should be fine for now. If you did change it to any one of these settings, you can just go ahead and click save, but if not, you can just click cancel. Now let's go over the software layout so you get a little bit more familiar with it. The first and most important part, in my opinion, is your timeline, which is basically this area right over here. This is where you're gonna be doing majority of the cutting, putting clips on the timeline, removing clips, making different cuts, editing out sections, and so on. You can also adjust how zoomed in you want your timeline to be by either using your mouse pad on your laptop or by pressing command or control and the plus button to zoom in or the minus button to zoom out. You can also adjust how zoomed in you want your video to be. The first thing you need to do to do this is make sure you have the clip selected. Head over to the top right of your screen. Make sure you're under video, basic, under position and size. You can use the little slider to change your zoom. So if you drag the slider more to the right, it zooms in. If you drag it more to the left, it zooms out. We're just going to keep it the original scale, so you can either type in 100% just like this, or what you can do is click Ctrl Z on your keyboard to bring it back to how it was before. You also have a lot of um, different settings here on your timeline that come in very handy. One of them includes the undo and redo button. So for example, if you would like to undo a change, you can just click this button right over here, or you can click Ctrl Z on your keyboard like I mentioned previously. Then you can press this redo button if you would like to redo a change, or you can click Ctrl Shift Z on your keyboard to do that exact same thing. You also have the split button over here which will basically allow you to split a clip in half if you click it like so, just like that. So you can see now um, that this actually turned into two different clips. They also have the delete left button right over here which will basically delete the clip from the left of your playhead or you also have this delete right button which will delete the clip from the right side of your playhead. Now the next part of the software interface which is just as important is the player. So this is where you're going to be able to see what you're actually doing 
and editing and this is where you can preview your edit you can start and stop the playback by either clicking on this button or clicking on space if you come up here to the top right corner of your player section you can also turn on things like color more advanced like color and scopes i'm not going to be using these in this tutorial but you can turn those on if you'd like you can change the preview quality so you can have your software either prioritize the quality of your playhead or the performance so for example if you don't have a strong computer you might want to put this onto performance mode right over here so you might want to put this on performance priority so your playback is still going to be smooth you can also make your playback full screen if you click on this button right over here or you can click this button to minimize it just by moving the playhead as you can see it increases and it zooms out and in this player section you will also be able to see how long your project is in total right now and where your playhead is right now so if i move it along the timeline as you can see it shows me what time i'm currently at and the total length of the video right over here now on the right side here you will see that you have the details around your project or if you select or highlight a certain clip you will have different settings and adjustments that you can make to that clip right here so you will have video adjustments audio adjustments speed adjustments animation and adjustment adjustments or even color adjustments we're gonna be covering that more in depth in a little bit and then on the left side you will also have your media panel so this is where you will have you know all of the clips that you imported you will have different spaces on your computer computer uh, and your library and you also have your audio library right over here to import songs or sound effects to your clip you also have text right beside audio so you can choose from a variety of different text templates and um, text that you want to add to your clip and then you will also have stickers where you can add different stickers onto your video you're gonna have effects transitions and filters to change the colors for example of your clips or adjustments as well but one of the things you will be doing most of the time is actually changing the scale of your videos to make sure that it fits the certain format that you are editing in so for example i'll switch to the youtube aspect ratio which is 9 by 16 or 16 by 9 if you did forget how to do this just make sure you don't have the clip selected head over to the modify click on modify under ratio make sure you switch to 16 by 9 and go ahead and click on save as you can see that on this 16 by 9 timeline this clip does fill up my screen fully if your clip doesn't one thing you can do is either you can just grab these edges and scale it up so it fits the whole screen just like this or you can also come here on the right side of the screen to video make sure you're under basics under position and size you can change the scale over here as i said before the more you move to the right the more it zooms in and the more you move to the left the more it zooms out but since this position is already good i'm just going to keep the scale to 100 if you would like to under uniform scale right beside position you can change the x and y axes if you want it to fit some specific way or you can also just grab your footage make sure it's selected and you can just move it sideways just like that or you can move it down which will be the y axis and if you move it side to side that's the x axis you can also rotate your clip right over here so if you wanted to make for example a 90 degree rotation all you need to do is type in 90 and then as you can see it rotates if you scroll down a little bit you can see blend modes so blending modes are basically for adding for example special effects so let me show you an example of how that would look like so for example here's a lightning flash overlay and if i go ahead and click on this and you go down to blend mode make sure you switch the mode to overlay and as you can see it overlays on top of the video beneath it this obviously isn't the best overlay since there's some dark spots but you can also experiment with different modes such as soft light which works pretty well with this clip and right under the modes you can see the opacity section right over here the opacity is basically the transparency of the clip so if you lower down the transparency as you can see it's more faded away and if you bring the opacity more up it's more visible so i would say for this overlay i would keep it around the 60 to 70 mark right over there other than that at the bottom of the video section you also have a function to stabilize your footage so for example if you have a clip that's not stable you can just click on that and that will stabilize it for you these are all decently stable clips so it won't do much but you would basically just choose the clip that you want to stabilize and click stabilize and then it'll stabilize it for you it might take a few seconds to finish stabilizing it but you know you'll get more smooth looking footage after it and you can also choose the level of stabilization and right under stabilize you can also choose the level of stabilization so for example you can either choose recommended the minimum cut is basically it won't zoom in as little as humanly and the most stable it just stabilizes it the most out of the other two um so here's kind of how it looks like after stabilization and here's how it looks like without stabilization 
again it's pretty similar because it was already stable footage but trust me it's gonna help you a lot then you also have some other options in here like enhancement which will basically make your videos look better it sharpens the picture and adjusts brightness contrast and colors for a nicer appearance another really often used feature in editing and this is a little bit more advanced but um is keyframing so for example if you had this clip right over here right and you wanted to have like a slow zoom on it then you could basically just go ahead and again choose the clip that you are trying to use make sure it's selected so for this tutorial i'm just going to be using the shark one for example and make sure you're on video and basic now what you want to do is you want to put your playback marker wherever you want the zoom to start so i'll just have it at the beginning right over here once you do that then you click on this little add frame button right beside scale then you go to where you want the animation to end so i'll just put it right around two seconds and then you can zoom in for example as much as you want so i'll just scale it to around 125 just so you guys can see the difference and now you'll see that it actually zooms in extra to my footage you can see it slowly scaling up and animating my zoom pretty much in that time period all right next up i want to show you guys how to actually make cuts in your videos so for example if i have this clip right over here and i want to make a cut let's say in the middle of it so around right over there then i can just press b on my keyboard to get the blade tool out as you can see on the screen and now you can place your playhead or mouse where you want it to make the cut so i'm just going to clip it right over there and as you can see now it made the split in the middle now let's say you want to do it another way another way to do this is by placing your playhead over the part you want to cut so i'll leave it at the same part where the previous cut was and then you want to go ahead and press ctrl b on your keyboard as you can see it cuts it more efficiently now what if you still have the blade tool selected and you want to go back to your mouse cursor so you can just go ahead and press a and as you can see that'll remove it and you'll be able to move your clip let's say i want to continue from the middle point and delete the rest of the clip so you're just going to go back to your regular mouse by pressing a on your keyboard i'm going to select this clip to the right side and i'm just going to go ahead and press delete another thing that you can do is you can trim them so for example if you go to the edge of the clip and then you start dragging it in a certain direction you can see now it's cutting out that part of my clip now if you want to change any of your keyboard shortcuts you can always just come up here to the top where it says shortcut click on it and then here pretty much any sort of thing that you could do in the software you could actually go ahead and set a certain shortcut or modify modify it by clicking on it then pressing the button you would like to replace it with so for example for the split mode you can click the x and then you can set it to n or whatever you'd like and as you can see the shortcut conflict comes up this is because this shortcut is already set for another shortcut you just want to go ahead and click cancel and set it to something that none of these are selected to me personally i would keep it b but you can do whatever you'd like after you've done that you can just go ahead and click on save now let's explore adding text to your video to do this go to the text menu located at the top left of your screen right beside audio click on it and for this walkthrough we're just gonna bring in the default text just to show you guys how this works so to bring this text into the actual timeline what you want to do is select it and drag and drop it to the beginning of the clip from there you can tweak various settings modify the text properties choose different fonts adjust the size and make other text related changes as needed you can also customize the style of the text which is basically if you want it to be bold underlined or italics or you can select all of them you'll also have the opacity right under blend which basically as I said before is the transparency of the clip or in this case of the text so I'm just gonna keep it as 100 so it's as bold as possible you can also change the stroke which is basically the thickness of the outline of the black border the more you go to the left the thinner it gets the more you go to the right the thicker it gets so I'm just gonna keep it around here 29 and you can change the color if you want you can play around with it I'll just keep it black for now but you can choose whatever you'd like that suits your video also note that the opacity works similarly for all clips adjusting it affects how transparent a clip appears on top of others the layers function follows a simple rule the top layer takes priority on the screen aside from these adjustments you can enhance your text by adding effects such as a drop shadow you can change the opacity the blurriness and the distance as well as the angle of the shadow you can also add things such as backgrounds to your text you can change the color of them you can also round the rectangle as you can see right under background you can also change the glow you can increase the intensity to make it stand out more and you can extend the range to make it a little bit more visible i guess but i want to keep it subtle so i'm just gonna make it nice and low i'm gonna change the color to white while there are numerous templates available it's recommended to pick those that suit your style you can also download templates modify them and also add them to your timeline animating text is another exciting feature about this app all you need to do is beside basic there's templates beside templates there's animations you want to go ahead and click on animations under the animation section choose in and out animations give your text dynamic entrance
entrances as well as exits. You can experiment with different ins and outs, but you want to find the one that fits your video and the style of the video you're editing. For a quicker start, explore text templates right beside animations as I said previously. As you can see, the previews are shown on the screen. If you would like to download them, all you need to do is click this download button in the bottom right of the icon, and then you can customize them to your liking. Doing this can significantly speed up your workflow. Don't hesitate to use these templates as a foundation, renaming them and adjusting details like font, size, and animation to suit your preferences. We're not done just yet. Go watch part 2 of CapCut for Beginners where I will get into more detail for elements such as music, color grading, transitions, effects, captions, and much more. I'll see you guys there.